Hi everybody, Justin here from chemistrynotes.com and we are going to finish up with alkanes today. Uh, in the last video, video number two from section 20, which is kind of like chapter 20, this whole chapter is called an introduction to organic chemistry. In the last video, which was video number two, we talked about alkanes. In this video, I want to talk about cycloalkanes, which is, are just alkanes in a cycle, right? In a ring. And then I'm going to move into alkenes and alkynes. And then in the next video, we'll learn how to name alkenes and alkynes. So first things first, let's come right back to where we are. We're talking about cyclic alkanes, more commonly referred to as cycloalkanes. All right. So it says, besides forming chains, alkanes can form rings and become cycloalkanes. Notice the general formula is no longer CnH2n plus 2, like, out, like straight chain alkanes. The general formula is CnH2n. C3H6, you can't have a ring until you get the three carbons. C3H6, this is not propane, but cyclopropane. All right, two ways to draw it are shown. Number four, I'm sorry, four carbons is cyclopropane butane. Okay, so C4H10 was butane. C4H8 is cyclobutane. All right, now cyclopropane and cyclobutane are, it's very hard to get them to exist for very long because they're unstable, right? If you remember a saturated carbon, a carbon that makes four bonds, right? We talked about Lewis structures and Vesper theory. That carbon likes to have a bond angle of 109.5. Here, that angle is forced to not be 109.5, and it doesn't like that. So cyclopropane, cyclobutane, unstable. The next one, C5H10. Okay, you're starting to get that bond angle pretty close to 109.5. So cyclopentane, you do see quite often. And then at the top of page two of the notes, where we just arrived at, C6H12, cyclohexane, is also stable. It is, as you might expect, a ring of six carbons, and each carbon has two hydrogens attached to it, all right? So that's C6H12. I've got the very busy version, and then I've got my condensed or Kekuli structure, which is just a ring where every junction, okay, every junction right here is a CH2 group, okay? So that's cyclohexane. So how do we name these guys? Well, I've got A and B here. So A is gonna be some sort of cyclopropane. And you'd be right if you guessed methyl cyclopropane. Two things, it's one word. And I don't have to call it one dash methyl because it's understood that that's on carbon one. Methyl cyclopropane. Now in B, I've got two substituents, two branches. I've got a methyl group of carbon three and I have an isopropyl group off of carbon one. How come it's one, two, three like that, not three, two, one? Well, the numbering pattern that I chose is because it places uh, the branches in alphabetical order for me. So one dash isopropyl dash three dash methyl cyclohexane, okay? The parent name, when you get to it, is always smashed up against the last branch's name. There's no dash. One isopropyl, three methyl, cyclo, what did I have? Was that cyclohexane, cyclopentane? All right, C, here's the next one. This is some sort of cyclobutane. And I've got an ethyl group on top and I've got a propyl group on the bottom. That's not an isopropyl, that's a, that's a propyl group because it's the end carbon that makes the attachment off of carbon two. This is one ethyl. 2-propyl cyclobutane. Notice the E comes before the P, the ethyl and the propyl. All right, so cycloalkanes, didn't need to talk too much about them. They're very similar to alkanes. The naming is the same, just a little bit different when you try to figure out what the branching is. Now let's talk about alkenes and alkynes. You notice that the names alkenes and alkynes sound a lot like alkanes. Well, just like alkanes, these two guys are carbon-carbon links or carbon-carbon rings. You're either in a chain, straight chain, or you're in a ring, okay? Alkenes happen to have a carbon-carbon double bond. 
and alkynes have a carbon-carbon triple bond. Now, if you make a double bond or a triple bond, you're going to limit the number of hydrogens that you can have attached, right? That's why these guys are said to be saturated, but we won't get into that. Alkenes, hydrocarbons having at least one carbon-carbon double bond. Alkynes, hydrocarbons having at least one carbon-carbon triple bond. If you were to have both, you would be an enine. All right, alkenes. I put a big box around alkenes. We're going to start talking about that one. The general formula is actually the same as cycloalkanes. All right, no big deal, just something to be aware of. General formula, CNH2N. The simplest one would be ethene. There is no such thing as methene because I have to have two carbons to make a double bond, right? Ethene. Ethene has a common name, ethylene. It's C2H4, and you see its structure below. All right, so let's move to a new page. Let me draw that structure of ethene again. So ethene is a derivative of ethane, right? The ene tells me it's a double bond. Now, each carbon atom in the double bond, okay? The carbon on the left and the carbon on the right, at the top of the page there, each of those carbons is sp2 hybridized. Remember when we talked about hybridization? You can just kind of point to each bond to go around. S, P1, P2. Each carbon has three things attached, so it's S, P1, P2. The double bond, double bond counts as one thing. S, P1, P2. So the carbon-carbon sigma bond, yeah, I'm starting to talk about the, the double bond in, with more spe specificity now. The carbon-carbon double bond. It's a, it's a collaboration of two different types of things. It's a sigma bond and a pi bond. So the second bullet point talks about sigma bonding. The carbon-carbon sigma bond is formed by sharing an electron pair in a line directly between the sp2 hybrid orbitals. So it's like an internuclear line, it's direct. Okay. The carbon-carbon pi bond is formed by sharing an electron pair between the p orbitals on each carbon atom. That is actually on a plane above and below an internuclear line. So I've drawn stuff like this before when we talked about uh, in section nine, when we talked about molecular orbitals and covalent bonding, but we're not in section nine, we're in section 20 and we need to know how this works, so let's have a look. So you can see the sigma bond, that tiny little intersection there, I've got two electrons drawn. And then the obvious two electrons are my pi electrons. And those are, those are untouched p atomic orbitals that reside, or I'm sorry, that remain from the free isolated carbon atoms and their electronic structures. The circles on the outside, these are my hydrogen 1s atomic orbitals. And those are forming sigma bonds with carbon's other sp2 orbitals. Remember, you have three sp2 orbitals off each carbon. Okay, so this is how we generate the pi bond when we really take a closer look. So, in summary, on the right-hand side here, it says a carbon-carbon double bond contains four shared electrons, one sigma bond, which has two electrons, and one pi bond, which has two electrons. All right, so let's move to the next page of notes here. And I do want to make a note before we move on. It says, because the two 2p atomic orbitals must be aligned parallel to each other, you have to have the two, the, the p orbitals, by the way, those were the dark ones that look like dumbbells. They have to be aligned so that they parallel, so they can have um, connection of pi electrons above and of connection of pi electrons below. If they're askew or even perpendicular, you're not going to get the electrons to be shared, two electrons to be shared across those 2p orbitals. So it says, because the two 2p atomic orbitals must be lined parallel to form the pi bond, rotation around that carbon-carbon double bond is not possible. Now, the minute you start to have rigidity, you allow the window to open for stereoisomerism to come in. So look at 2-butene right here. I'm drawing 2-butene, so 2 means the double bond is off of carbon 2. When I say off of carbon 2, I mean between carbon 2 and 3. 
Now, remember, this is rigid. I'm not able to freely rotate between that double bond right there. So it's stuck. And when it's stuck, there's two ways to orient this. I can have the H's kind of on the same side, cis. Cis is same side, right? Or I can have the two hydrogens be trans. Remember when we first learned about this stuff, I referred to transcontinental railroad as across the United States. Here, the two H's are across the double bond from each other. Cis 2-butene, trans 2-butene, okay? All right, nomenclature of alkenes. We've gone over nomenclature of alkanes. And because of that, this next video seems not redundant, but it's definitely something that's easier to follow because we've already practiced how to name alkanes. So naming alkenes is coming up next. You should stick around for that video. It's video number four coming up for section 20.